Hello everybody, it's Dr. Novak again. This is going to be an interesting video. Uh, the tank you're looking at here is Andy's tank. And uh, he's going to explain. He even has a small short video at the end of this video. Watch to the end. Because he actually made a short video explaining the tank uh, to me. But I have lots of pictures to show you. Plus the fact... Uh, there was a video just released, I think a day or two ago, by Peck Tech. In case you have not heard of him, he's been around a long time making aquariums and uh, doing different things with fluvals. Well, he kind of has this hilarious video. I went and watched it because a lot of people have contacted me and said, you got to watch this video. It's kind of hilarious how he starts the video out. I think it would be interesting because he takes this fluval, and this will be his second anoxic filter he's building. And the reason he's tearing down the fluval, he actually admits it has not been doing that good, and he decided since the anoxic filter has been doing good for him, he's going to make it into an anoxic filter. It's a video you may go watch. Uh, I'll leave a link below in case you want to click on it if you've never seen Peck Tech. But uh, he, he's more professional with his videos. Uh, I've had an interview with him, and um, he's, he's a lot more professional with his videos than I am. So, but anyhow, it is hilarious. you got to at least go and look at it and watch it with the way he starts it out. So, uh, now uh, we're going to get into the video uh, with Andy. Okay, the first thing we're going to get into with Andy's tank, you saw a picture of it finished, but he starts out with the same under gravel plates that I used in my 90 gallon and in my uh, 40 gallon breeder. Plus he uses the Lee uplift tube, cuts it, glues it into place as you can see here. And just like I did, uh, he uses a ground cover fabric which allows the water to go through but not let fine particulate matter from his substrate go through. Uh, he's showing the uplift tube with the little diffuser on top. It's seven inches. So actually the uplift tube itself is only about five inches if you don't put the diffuser on it, which it's not actually needed, but if you want, you can put it on. So now after that, he puts his first layer of substrate down. That would be where the black is. Then his second layer is of the laterite. And I'm not sure of the substrate he's using here. It could be a, a fluval. And then he tops it back off. Basically, what I've shown you. Tops everything off with the his substrate. This should be about four inches thick, but uh, he's got everything even out on his substrate. But he's going to decide whether or not he wants to slope it. And here it is. I guess he's experimenting with sloping the substrate in the aquarium. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. It can be sloped. And, of course, the next picture is going to show yes. So he's already got his tubing in for his uplift tube there for the bubbles. You can see how high the substrate's, what, almost five inches high. The substrate at the other end is a lot higher. He puts his wood in. Basically, this is what we are. He's already done with the plenum. From here, it's just a matter of how you wish to decorate. Not real complicated, making a plenum. Uh, basically, all it's going to do is make sure that fluids move through the substrate very slowly so you can build and make anoxic conditions and not anaerobic conditions. And look at this substrate on the side. It, it could be eight, nine inches high. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Uh, could even be higher than that. Could even be 10 inches high. Well, whatever you prefer, because fluids will move, and that's what he's trying to achieve here, because it is high enough. It's almost 
four and a half inches, I'd say, because I know the tubing's five inches, so he's got at least four, four and a half inches. So the landscaping is typically whatever the hobbyist wants. And I just want to let people know, if you want to slope your back or whatever, go ahead. You can do it. He's going to use a OACE filter. And as you see by this picture, he is uh, also going to use CO2. He's got his regulator there. He's got his CO2 ready to go. Uh, the OACE filter will connect up. It looks like he's got it all disconnected there. But uh, here it is, his filter. Apparently the OH filter just disconnects so you can move it out of there. And the tubing, uh, so you don't have to worry about quick disconnects like you do with the Eheim with this particular filter. The thing he's going to do, as you can see, it has a pre-filter. These filters do. That's, that looks kind of nice where you can pull the pre-filter out and clean it. Uh, hopefully it's not a big mess. Now here's his carbon bag. Now, because these come in containers, you can actually put carbon in there, and you can also put, um, uh, if it has more than one thing, uh, your BCB bags or basket in there. And uh, because he watched one of my videos, he bought the carbon and the GFO, everything from what I showed, and the resin that I show in one of my videos on how to make uh, what I call generic Dick, Dick Boyds. And that's what he did, made generic Dick Boyds. But there was one thing that you have to remember now. If you're going to use that resin, be a little cautious because that resin will take everything out of the aquarium down to zero if you use a whole lot of it. And it may make your water a little softer if you have very hard water because it will take everything down to zero. It's designed to remove all, it'll take your TDS right down to zero. So be cautious when you use it. You may have to experiment a little bit with it, but that resin is uh, the same stuff Dick Boyd uses, but uh, be careful with how much of it you're going to use. If you use a lot, and you like soft water, it will turn your water soft, and it will also eliminate a lot of TDS that's in your, uh, which is total dissolved solids, out of your water. Okay, just a little bit of caution. I thought I'd let everybody know. Once he has everything set up, he sent me a few pictures of the substrate he's using. Um, and the plants he is also using. Now, he can go with a little harder plants because he is using CO2. But uh, that uh, that's a bulb he's using. It looks like it could be for a lily. But it looks like he's got some crypt going, starting out with the substrate. Uh, I've seen this substrate. It's uh, uh, coral sea or something like that. I think it could be lava. Lava rock or something. I'm not 100% sure. He's already putting his fish in the tank. Uh, it's green, so you know he's running his CO2 at full potential. And you can see the bubbles in the back. That would be for the plenum. But uh, as time goes on, that's what he's showing us. How things, you can tell this is a uh, picture after the tank's been running because you can see algae has built up into the canister filter. Uh, inlet or outlet tube we can see there. So we can see that uh, this has been running for a while. And of course here is the complete aquarium done and uh, looks a lot different than the pictures I showed you within just a few months. Now one thing that Annie wanted to find out is when everything's going to get broken in. Also those two green to the left those are probes. One of the probes is for uh, his uh, meter for pH. The other one is for the uh, redox. And here he is testing his water. And look at look at that. NO3. Nothing showing up on his test. But anyway. 
Uh, he did a short video, which I'm going to show you. And uh, pay attention. Pay attention when he shows you his pH and redox meter. And see how high his redox meter is in this ADA aquarium. Uh, it's incredibly high, which means he has a lot of oxidizers in the aquarium. Oxidizers are going to be used as what breaks down your fish poop, uh, rotting wood, rotting plants, dead fish. The more oxidizers you have, those are what's going to attack those insults and turn them into harmless or less harmless substances in our aquariums. The higher your redox, the more potential that you have for oxidizers to break down the insults that are in your aquarium. So anyway, I want to thank Andy for making this short little video. It's not very long. Uh, now you can hear it right from the person who built the aquarium's mouth, what he thinks about the filter and everything else. And I would can't thank Andy enough for sending me these pictures and letting me know how his tank got broken in and his test results. So now let's let Andy take over and tell you about his aquarium. Hi, Dr. Novak. This is Andy, your fan in Washington State. This is a tank update. I planted these plants about three weeks ago, and I think they're doing pretty good. My nitrates are very low, almost unreadable, and the phosphates, last time I tested, were nearly zero as well, based on the API testing. Uh, the plants seem to be growing well. Interestingly, I found that I was having significant nutrient deficiencies, even though I was dosing generous fertilizers twice a day. And I think what was happening was the cation resin in the uh, do-it-yourself Dick Boyd's that I made based on your video may have been sucking out some of the nutrients, specifically the potassium and the uh, all, <laughs> and all of the phosphates. I, I was getting phosphate deficiency. It's almost like there's absolutely no phosphates for the plants left. So I've started dosing just a little bit of the phosphate and just a little bit of the nitrates, watching carefully to make sure that my values are near zero every time I test. Anyway, I really like your system. I think it's working great. Haven't had any algae, or haven't had any diatoms. I haven't had anything at all for the last three weeks once the plants went in. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, I'm hoping that I have continued improved plant growth as the plants continue to recover from their nutrient deficiency, but so far, the new growth looks really great. Um, anyway, I got a couple questions. One is, is my bubbler going fast enough or too fast? I think it's okay. Um, I, I had it running really fast for a while, but I just turned it down recently because I thought maybe it would be better slower. Uh, and uh, can I turn that bubbler off at night? I think your video said I could without causing any problems to the beneficial bacteria that are finishing the nitrogen cycle in the substrate. My pH is 6.7. My uh, redox potential is 3.95. I'm running five, I'm running five BCB bags in my Awase filter. I've got my inline diffuser there and my uh, CO2 going right now. I'm running my ADA light uh, six and a half hours a day, and uh, I'm dosing daily a fertilizer regime a little bit more aggressive than the ADA mixes, but much less than like the estimative index and Tom Barr stuff. Anyway, I'm really hopeful that this is going to continue to grow great. I just want to say thank you so much for all the good information you've given, and I and, uh, appreciate your time in the hobby. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, that's it for this video with Andy's aquarium, ADA Aquarium. Uh, I thought I'd play it for you so everyone could see right from the horse's mouth, I guess you could kind of say. But anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I enjoyed making it. Uh, please subscribe 
if you can. And uh, until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Happy fish keeping and thank you for watching.